raises to class reptilia. Be on the lookout for old So the reptiles, again, snakes, lizards, geckos, skinks, turtles, crocs, and birds, they are known for having scales. Their birthing can be oviparous and ovoviviparous. Again, that's either uh, egg layers or an internal egg layer. Uh, they do produce a uric acid as part of their metabolism. Generally speaking, the reptiles are carnivores, and most of these organisms also feature the same thing as the amphibians, which is that three-chambered heart. There's one exception. They do have well-developed lungs. They also depend on Any discussion of the reptiles does include a little look at the dinosaurs, and I think this is important. And we'll look at the Archosaura line, which is a direct line to our crocodilians. Um, birds are ancestral to the T. rex and company. So, again, uh, this is part of that new thinking that, you know, the T. rex actually had feathers. Um, and a lot of this happened right around the Cretaceous extinction and you know who knows what caused that it could be the bacteria like some suggest or viruses some suggest or um, the uh, Cretaceous uh, the great big um, meteor off the uh, Yucatan Peninsula so here's a look at that split you've got the Archosaurus down here at the bottom and that Archosaurus branched off, and when you see the picture of the Archosaurus, you'll see it's very crocodile-like. And that gives rise to an evolutionary line that makes the crocs and croc relatives. Then you'll also see Archosaurus gave rise to another line, and that goes into more of the dinosaurs that you know and love. And eventually down to birds and other reptiles. There's the Archosaurus. Its name meant the ruling reptile, and fossil evidence supports this guy. So we'll just take the first direct line to the crocs and the gators. Again, class Reptilia. Every alligator that you see in North America is in the same genus and species, Alligator Mississippiensis. You can tell an alligator because of its broad snout, and it doesn't typically display its teeth. There's another gator. And here's a croc. Crocs are known for having a more narrow snout and class reptilia. This is also class reptilia. These turtles here on Turtle Beach in Hawaii. Here's class Reptilia, the snakes. They are characterized by having loosely jointed jaws, and that is so that they can open their mouth super, super wide to ingest their prey. They also have special organs called Jacobson's organs. When the forked tongue of a snake goes out, it brings back with it some chemical information, and it goes through Jacobson's or organs, which 
actually process that chemical information. Some snakes are known to have vestigial pelvic and limb bones, so why would you have that bone in there? I guess it must be something to do with descent with modification. And then there is some variable poisons found in uh, certain snakes. They are venomous. Again, class Reptilia, the snakes. This is the brown tree snake. This is an ecological disaster. Uh, if you go to the island of Guam and you look or listen for the sound of native birds, you will hear none thanks to the brown tree snake. Uh, and not only is that a problem for all of the birds, uh, if the brown tree snake gets in and you've got birds that are important pollinators, you lose some of your native flora as well. So this is an ecosystem killer, the brown tree snake. Um, mildly toxic to humans, uh, typically it can't bite, uh, it can't penetrate the skin, so it's not really a problem for humans, uh, except for the birds. And we talk about snakes that you do have to worry about. Here, pictured here, are the four venomous snakes of Texas. In the upper right hand corner, you have the aggressive uh, cottonmouth or water moccasin, uh, definitely something to avoid near waterways. Uh, and then we've got our copperhead. Copperhead, uh, be on the lookout. They like to the sun. Uh, they're very good at hiding in leaf litter. And then we've got our rattlesnake, which is uh, obvious by its uh, tail rattles. And then the last venomous snake we have to worry about is the coral snake. Uh, red than black, friend of Jack, red than yellow, could kill a fellow, and all that good stuff. Which one is this? Is this red than black, friend of Jack, or red than black could kill Jack? I don't know. We'll talk about this different kind of mimicry and coloration. And the question you have to ask yourself if you're in the field, do you go near the snake or not? Um, my best guess is don't go near any snakes in the field unless you're 100% sure. And the reason they have this coloration and this confusion um, is you don't want to mess with them. Kind of a funny story. This is a snake I found. It was about 11 o'clock at night uh, on the access road to the George Bush Turnpike. And this fella had uncoiled himself, and as it uncoiled, it chased towards this car. I was trying to uh, shoo it onto the waterway. It chased the car. It was absolutely hilarious. The car actually backed up. It was this The individual was so scared of the snake that even though it was in the car, it, it backed up. And I mean, it peeled out. And it was, it was funny. But the snake eventually made it back to the waterway. And, and all was good. But it's just kind of funny how deep our fear of snakes were. Now, it was too late at night. I couldn't quite identify it. It looked like a little rat snake and pretty harmless. But um, I kind of shoot it uh, using my vehicle um, <laughs> and, and being very, very cautious with it. I wasn't about to get bit by a snake. And even if it isn't a venomous snake, um, I still don't want to get bit by a snake at 11 o'clock on an access road in Irving, Texas. Be careful out there. Even this is kind of risky. I, I I really think this is this cause the small ones don't know how to control their venom. So this is this is really risky. Oh, let's talk about the ones that are the most dangerous of all the snakes. Um, when it comes to toxicity, the Taipan and the Fer de Lance uh, really sort of tie as far as how toxic they are. Um, you can probably make a stronger argument for the Taipan being the deadliest of all the venoms. Fer de Lance is in a very succinct area on this planet, found on one island. Um, the King Cobra, however, is responsible for most of the deaths. Um, it's because the King Cobra tends to enter more populated areas and densely populated areas so it's responsible for most of the human deaths and we talk about flat out toxicity the sea snake even though it's extremely docile and even when harassed will rarely rarely sting um, the sea snake does in fact and it's related to the cobras have the most toxic of toxins uh, when it comes to the reptiles um, when it comes to these snakes too the the good way the only way to get yourself bit is to really get between the snake and its air class reptilia Class Reptilia. Class Reptilia. This is a skink. 
They move very, very snake-like. In fact, if you're out on the trails, sometimes they might even jump out at you and you think, oh my gosh, it's a snake and it's just a lizard. Class Reptilia. Class Reptilia. Class Reptilia. We'll click out there and you can look at a difference between these monitors and Gila lizards. Um, these are the ones that are toxic to us, obviously. Which leads us to class Reptilia birds. Birds are noted for having adaptations that specifically help them fly and sexual dimorphism, which if you recall, sexual dimorphism is differences in the sexes in secondary sexual characteristics. So something other than the genitalia is different between the, the different birds. And you might think of a peacock as being a great example of that. But their adaptations to flight are all about being lightweight, all about being muscular, and all about efficiency so that they can fly better. Again, class reptilia. It's hard to think of flamingos as reptiles, but they are. Class reptilia. It's a little bit of a change of perspective to think of our national symbol as a reptile. 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 Peacocks are a good example of the sexual dimorphism with these the large pretty plumage being the male. Class Reptilia. I really need to get some higher res images. Uh, if anybody's looking for some potential bonus points, maybe throw me a couple of high res images. And that goes for anything you see in here that could be improved upon. Throw me uh, an email with a high res image or a link to an image and I'll include it. You'll be famous. This is a Hawaiian reptile. This is the uh, curved bill honey creeper and a good example of coevolution. It coevolved with the flower. There's another honey creeper. Again, a great curved bill and a great example of coevolution. This is the state bird of Hawaii. This is the nene or Canadian goose. And this is a neat look at adaptive radiation as well. So some very cool uh, birds out there very cool examples of different different evolutionary principles. Here's a puffin, class reptilia. Oh, and you've seen this picture before. It might have been on the first day of class. It might have been in one of the other lectures. But here we are, three birds walking around. You've got the course content on the left, and you've got the, oh, big bad instructor in the middle, and then you've got you. And the three of us are walking together on this great journey, and I'm your link between the instructor. I mean, I'm the link between you and the material. So hopefully you've seen this whole journey this way.